But you only need one. And I bought it on the drinking time. Yes. Do you copy the system? No, not yet. You don't have it on. I don't think so. I've got the. See your hands. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's right. That's why we do this. Uh, well, one of the reasons. So, uh, Stephen Soley uh, is here um, to be the chicken sacrifice uh, for uh, this morning. And uh, he'll be here to answer all of your questions about Exec SG because uh, this is the uh, question and answer. Yes, it's difficult. It's difficult. It's a mechanical device. Um, and <laughs> so now, n n there, a word of caution about that. You need to be in the box, really, to use it. Uh, <laughs> no, he's not in the box. So <coughs> the, uh, yeah, this is Trevor Dickinson, by the way, for those of you who don't know. Um, I'm sure all of you do. So. Uh, I know that you have this entire presentation structured and scripted and uh, presentable, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So without further ado, Stephen Trevor. Hello, hello. Hello, 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 oh, hello. There's green light. Hello, hello. 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 Yes. In the beginning. How's that, Paul? Did you want to put a slide up, Yeah. Do you have it? Yeah, it's, on, it's still on the hard drive and work. Works SL, oh, No, at work. I might have. <laughs> See, I, I didn't put it there. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Just uh, uh, ownership? Nah. What is maybe what it does? Yeah. I think we're gonna have a very that one. That one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe we'll we'll put it there just for some idea generation. Okay. Yes. So uh, what I wanted to do is have a little Q and A about Exec SG because it has changed ownership and is under a new um, uh, new model of development, new <sighs> software process. Turn the light off. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get into that, will we, TJ? <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Uh, <laughs> let that go. <laughs> Next year. There was some drinking last night. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, you must really control yourself, Steve. I try. I try. <laughs> That Dr. Pepper goes straight. <laughs> so I, I, what, we want, what I wanted to do is my idea is to have a little Q&A and also allow questions from the internet or the internet. <laughs> Depending on how you want to say it. So uh, if you have any questions on what this means and where Exec SG is going next and or anything like that, uh, Please, fire, fire away. Yes, sir. What, what do we think multi-core will look like in the a, a, API? Yeah, yeah. Right? Right. Well, okay. well, we second. talked about that with, uh, with Thomas already, and, and this isn't a new thing. It's just uh, we just got renewed interest, renewed investment. Um, the way... I think what's going to happen is uh, we're going to dedicate one core to Amiga, to the OS, and then we're going to have the other cores kind of like helpers. So that's the basic model that we're thinking. Because any other attempt would break everything, and we, I don't think we should break everything right now. Um, I mean, we could, but that would break everything, and then you end up with uh, yeah. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so that's that's what we're thinking, and, and we talked about um, core affinity and all that wonderful stuff. So he wants to put in um, a real, uh, I guess you say scheduler in there. He wants to put a real scheduler, but say core zero has 
more affinity than anything else if you're running a, a task which doesn't understand multicore. And if it does under, understand multicore, it can go flip, 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 flip. So that, that's kind of the basic gist of it right now. Right? Uh, but to get there, we have to start decoupling some of the some of the concepts first. And that, that's where we're going to start. We're going to start decoupling concepts. And the scheduler is like number three, two on the list. Like we were just, we just had the meeting on Friday. So, and I made my notes. And I'm like, so what will that mean to the average user? To me, I'm a user, what will it mean to me? Well, to a user, you're not going to see any changes until we turn on that scheduler. So it'll look normal, everything will behave normal, but we're really changing underneath. But like 64-bit, 32-bit PCs. And there are 32, 64 is a yeah, different sure. animal. Uh, okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're just talking cores yeah. at the moment. So but will, we'll have to have software adapted to use this, or will this happen naturally? Yeah, you'll have to adapt the software. I think that's, it's simple as far as uh, getting developers to use it. You just sit a, turn on a flag. Okay. Say, and multi-core aware, and then you follow a different set of rules, and we'll try to enforce the rules, of course, with the API <coughs> and the MMU, and you know we'll try to make them follow rules, but there will have to be rules. I um, I'm reminded of uh, of the Commodore engineer Bryce Nesbitt because uh, he was here on show, and I, I asked him, what, "What's with Enforcer? Remember Enforcer? Enforcer." was their stepping stone to get memory protection in Amigo OS. So they invented Enforcer to show developers where you're breaking the rules in runtime, right? So I'm like, hmm, maybe we need a core enforcer kind of thing, a multi-core enforcer that would uh, enable developers to know if their software is compliant with our vision, right? So I'm thinking, we yeah, might need some investment in that area too, because uh, those guys are pretty clever. <laughs> and he, he actually, they were thinking about this long, 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 long time. Yeah, another question? Yeah. Oh, there's a microphone. <coughs> it's working. Is it working? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Speak loud. The, uh, the multi-core support you're talking about, uh, is that different than making the core multi, or sorry, kernel or whatever SG, uh, multi-core aware and running Amiga OS in a virtual machine on one core and allowing other software to use all the cores if they follow the rules that you're trying to put in place. Is that is it sandboxing? Is it different than what you're talking about or is it is that what you're talking about? No, I, I'm just talking about the multi-core aspect. You have all the cores doing something. Right. But the, the virtual machine stuff, the sandboxing, memory protection. Well, that would be one way of, of doing multi core support is to run the OS. Oh, oh, I see. I have the OS yeah. component. Sorry, sorry. components run. Ow. That's the. <laughs> run in a. Uh, Talk to the kids. You're outside the box. <laughs> so. What you're talking about is, is not anything like having the OS or the OS components running in a sandbox on one core and... No, no, no sandboxing was mentioned yet, but that is an option, right? Okay. That is an option. Uh, there are many ways to do it. We're kind of thinking incrementally right this, at this okay. point. Right? Because uh, when you think about it, say we want to throw in a virtual machine underneath later, the apps won't know. They'll just continue running. The API right. is the same. Right. Right. So you don't really waste any effort by going the incremental steps. And it's a lot cheaper <laughs> time-wise and, and, and uh, investment-wise to get just an incremental step or two first. And then maybe, yeah, virtual machine. Yeah, that's, that's another thing that we're definitely looking into. Yeah. Yeah. Virtualizing it. As long as it, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a good, uh, it's a good time to do this kind of stuff. We have many options. But we, we, we're trying not to break it all, though. That's the thing. Right. As soon as you break everything, you're starting over from zero, even if you have an emulator, right? 
you're still starting from zero. You're hoping developers will rally and they'll come behind you and use your API versus that guy's API versus that guy's API. It's a dangerous step. Dangerous step. You might lose them. You might actually you might win. But you might lose. I don't know. It's hard to say. Developers are fickle beasts. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, and they're lazy, right? <laughs> I'm one. <laughs> uh, if you don't make it easy, they walk. So, <laughs> especially the modern developer, I have some juniors, and uh, man, they have no patience for things anymore. In my day, <laughs> we stuck with it. <laughs> These guys, they go, ah, oh, no, it's too hard. I'm gonna switch companies. What? <laughs> well, maybe it was easier with punch cards. Maybe it was easier oh, punch card, that, card that, yeah. but I'm not that old. What's, yeah. a, what's a punch card? Uh, I know, I've seen it in uh, the Flint movies. Questions? Oh, there's two more. Okay. Careful. <laughs> We're 20 online. Oh, Go ahead. Really? Yes. Holy <coughs> cow. I didn't expect such a. You gotta eat the mic. Bunch of All right, hi. Um, <coughs> you mentioned virtual machines. You alluded to ARM yesterday. Is ARM the preferred leading candidate for an alternative CPU architecture? Ah. Any preference for supporting multiple architectures? Oh, yeah, yeah. The question is about ARM, in case you couldn't hear it. Uh, you know, is it a target? Um, we've been talking ARM for years. Yeah, this isn't new. I mean, we never did anything about it, obviously, but, but uh, you know, running ARM in big Indian mode, try that, right? When you're ready uh, off, when you're right ready. now, the state of affairs is that we don't want to rock the boat at this moment because, as, as Michael is here, you know, saying there's lawsuits going on. So investment is frozen while lawsuits happen, right? Basically. Well, I, I Not XXSG. Not XXSG. Uh, it's free of the lawsuit. But... We are tied so closely to Amigo OS. So we can do a lot, but we still need our partners to run with us. So it's like, ah, oh, you're kind of tied. Because imagine you go ARM, well, all the OS components need to be pre-compiled, minimum, right? So yeah, that's a, that's a difficult uh, step to take at this moment. Um, and uh, things have changed again, because the power uh, spec has been released to the public. I call it the spec, but the, the, the machine, the, the chip. You can build a power chip in your basement now. It's for free, right? So it, things have changed. It's like, okay, well now, uh, oh, well, gee, maybe maybe your IoT guys might go, hmm, <laughs> look over there. I could make my own chip <laughs> and not give ARM anything. <laughs> I make 10 million of these, that's a lot of money. Anyway, so I don't know what's gonna happen in the industry, but um, we might be able to ride that <laughs> wave if it happens. I don't, I don't know the future. So that would be a nice, um, a nice way to extend our life on power, right? A little bit, maybe? Or should we just forget that? Go to ARM, right? Go to X, X, X60, whatever, whatever. Power 10. Power 10 for all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he works for IBM. He has the best day list. Oh, does he? <laughs> oh. Oh, that guy works for IBM. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> but uh, we definitely are, are uh, looking at different hardware platforms. But the, the amount of investment required to switch is nasty. I, I'm not just talking money. It's time. And some of us are getting older. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, it would be great, but is that really what I want to do right now? <laughs> so like, anyway, uh, so my focus then is more short term, right? Get the A1222 out the door, get the X5000 plus out the door, see what the market does. 5040. 5040 as well, P5040. Or, yeah. <laughs> anyway. um, and just uh, you know, do the baby steps, and then see what you guys do, what the market does, right? You're gonna eat up this thing. You're gonna buy a ten of them, or are you just gonna buy one and throw it in the closet, right? So, 
we got to see what's going on here, right? That's, that's my view. Let's see. So there's, there's a, a question from the internet. Internet uh, first. Hold on, Brian. <laughs> Googling exec SG yields zero up-to-date hits. Even official Amiga OS development would be neglects to mention it. How do you plan to address this from Swedish Internet on IRC? Apparently, Google is ignoring me. <laughs> Why are they ignoring me? Well, uh, you know, in the old days, I used to submit URLs to Google, but then they stopped accepting that, right? From the robots, or spiders, or whatever you want to call them. So Google does what Google does. Um, <laughs> I, can't, I can't influence them anymore unless you insert money. <laughs> yeah, pay money. Yeah, I'm sure if I gave them some money, they would look at my, my stuff. Uh, anyway, um, Link? as far as addressing the documentation on exec SG, I thought the smart approach is to use uh, the wiki already established, wiki and egos.net. However, that's, uh, that's controlled by Hyperion. So I have to get permission, or we have to agree, I guess would be more, more, ad more accurate, that I can just peppering that with exec SG info. I can branch off to a few pages and start, start just going nuts, right? Start filling it in. That would be my preference. Not making a new place separate because that, that just doesn't make a lot of sense. Right? So that, that's what I'm planning to do. Uh, I haven't done it. Um, and then Google will find it and you'll be happy again. <laughs> but, you, but you do have a wiki alone. Well, I have a private wiki. Oh, of course, that's right. And then this information just came up, so this is fresh. Right? But I want to put it on the wiki wiki. <laughs> But I need to make sure I don't step on any toes. So we'll, we'll be discussing that. Yeah. Another item for the agenda. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, we'll get one from Brian here. He's uh, he's anxious. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, the shared library does that include shared objects as well? Like better integration of shared objects. Shared objects. Uh, yeah. That's 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 going to be no no changes there. No changes, no changes there. there. Actually, shared shared objects are um, a device in ELF library versus exec SG. Okay. Yeah, so it doesn't really, ELF library and DOS do a little dance to make those work. And they're not really shared, as you know. Uh, well, I've tried to explain in previous uh, <laughs> DEF cons. Shared objects are not shared, it's a copy per task. It's just a, a quick way of getting your Linux libraries over to Amigo S without thinking. That's what it's designed for. It's just a quick way to port, get things ready. Static linked, actually. It says shared, but it's not. It's static linked. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we're cutting in and out, are we? I am? I think you have to move your mic closer. Okay. Is that better? I'm in the box. There's another question from the uh, from, there, there's another question from the internet here. Um, do you plan on doing uh, code reviews like something like a uh, review board that they have on Linux and other projects? Code reviews? Huh. I guess that's uh, well. <coughs> Right now, I, I do code reviews myself. <laughs> so uh, when I see a submission, I review it. So yeah, we do code reviews. <laughs> uh, I, I just reviewed a bunch of stuff from Jamie Kruger that went in. And anything I didn't like, I just fixed. So we're very, uh, we're very loosey-goosey on the code reviews at the moment. But uh, I do check everything. And everyone else is invited to check everything. I, I'm a believer in the collective code ownership model where nobody owns any one piece of the software. So anybody can work on anything and everyone can review anything. So that's, uh, that's the way I like to run, run things. Um, it is cutting out, yeah. I mean, it's my battery. No. Oh, is it? Okay. Okay. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, I do also. That doesn't mean we don't have subject matter experts, but uh, 
I don't like the idea that, oh, there it goes. Okay. Uh, oh, that's better. Hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I like the subject matter experts, but I don't like them to take control of a component and say, well, nothing goes in and out of this without my permission. That's a little far, I think. I don't like the teams that run like that. So. Um, I don't know what that code review tool he's talking about is. Review board? Yeah, review it's board. Open source. It's for code reviews. Open source. I don't know. I've, I've used a hundred different tools, so I, I don't care what the tool is, to be honest, because dime a dozen. <laughs> What's the tool this week? Um. <laughs> Any other questions from here? Because I've got a lot more online. You need a microphone, Mr. Stevens. Well, I can repeat his question as long as I don't cut out again. Okay. Is Bill asking a question? Yeah. No, you are. Oh, Bill is. Yeah. Okay. Oh, U-boot. Huh? U-boot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's open source, but uh, Amiga's put their code into it. Is that open source or is that just Amiga now? Oh, uh, the question was U-boot. Uh, Amiga or someone put some code in there. Is it still open source? The answer is yes. It doesn't matter who puts code in there. That's, that particular piece of software is under the GNU public license and therefore always public to anyone who has a copy of the binary. So if, if you have a copy of the binary, you have a right to the source code. No question. Doesn't matter who put what in there. Yeah. But is it available out there? Is it available? I yeah. haven't seen it. <laughs> that's another. That's another thing. Oh, it's doing it again. Yeah, no, I, I don't like looking over there. <laughs> yeah. Um, Give the connector a push. Small piece. Here. Try this one. Try this side. No. No more. No better. Oh, oh. Yeah. Take Travis. This is just. Garbage. Sorry, there's technical difficulties. We're in the box, though. So there's, there's We're the safe, technical right? difficulties. Sorry. Oh, I just thought I'd pull this out if we could figure it out. This does not come out, does it? No, no don't pull that out. Okay, don't do it. Okay. <laughs> now we mixed it up. Yay. Are you sure you each have different ones? Yeah. They're not just handed back the same ones? Well, it's possible. No, I, I actually checked the number. Okay, good. That's why we put numbers He's on. a little hungover. <laughs> <laughs> I think the last time someone drank that much was uh, leaving Las Vegas. Oh. <laughs> so what happens in Amy West stays in Amy West. Except for it's on the stream. Yeah, oh. except it's on a stream live. So yeah, anyway. Right. <laughs> So the question was, well, where's the source code? <laughs> they could basically, right? Uh, well, they, we're, we need to uh, need to package that up and publish it, basically. Yeah, it's not it's nice, not nicely packaged and up and available for everyone to download right now. Um, my my dream <coughs> is that it would be in my uh, repository. Actually, have a copy in there, so all the developers can see it anytime they need to. Because sometimes you get a bug. You're not sure if it's really exact. Library, it might be before that, especially when dealing with drivers. Because U-Boot, I don't know if you know, sets up the hardware. Then it passes control to the OS, which sometimes sets up the hardware again. Sometimes it doesn't. So you're not sure what state it, the hardware is in when you actually, your driver fires up. And uh, as a driver writer myself, it's frustrating when you don't know what state it's in and you have to write a whole bunch of code that's already in U-Boot to do what just U-Boot did, right? So you're like, oh, why do I have to do this again? Right? <laughs> ah. <laughs> Plus U-Boot also tells you about the structure of the hardware. It tells you where everything is, the modules, right? Like how much memory is here? What, where is the, uh, I don't know, what is it, the memory card? What address is it at? U-Boot tells you that. So this, this one works better. Yeah. Uh, there was another LD, yeah. Yeah, so my, <laughs> uh, my question was primarily relating to uh, the steering committee and how things are going to work going forward with Hyperion. So you, you uh, all have this lovely new uh, DMA engine, call it. 
uh, support for DMA now on the X5000. So there's a ton of places in the operating system that could take advantage of that. So as you guys create new features, how do you know that the developers who are part of Hyperion's team are gonna take advantage of it? How do you all coordinate what needs to be done by each side and what the priorities are? And can you give us a little hint into any sort of roadmap work you may have already worked out at this point? Okay, so everybody heard the question, I assume? About the DMA engine and how, how we coordinate with Hyperion, basically? Uh, I, I just, uh, haven't had that problem yet because we haven't released it yet to Hyperion to play with. But um, basically how, how any OS component works is you make an API and you release it and then we ask the developers to use it. It's that simple. There's no formal go here and use this. Um, the first application I would expect would be a graphics library. I go to graphics library, start moving bitmaps with the DMA engine, right? But they don't have to, but I would strongly <laughs> encourage. Uh, and our steering committee would not generally be involved with that. Although if no action happens, we would definitely go, hey, why hasn't this been done yet? <laughs> we, we wrote this, we should use it. So that, that's the way I look at it. There's nothing formal yet. I don't think we need a formal process or procedure, but it may come to that. So I'm kind of like, oh, we'll see what happens first. Yeah, so no, kind so of wishy-washy, but that's what it is. Uh, Bill, Bill, B, Bill T on uh, Amiga World had a bunch of questions. He had a similar one to DNA, which is a little more technically advanced. So you can go to the forum thread after an answer. Okay. Um, his question is, is a good one here, 4A, uh, literally. Um, is there a contact point or procedure to inquire about porting new hard, uh, two new hardware platforms? Two that, new hardware platforms, who do I talk to? Right, because that would be yeah. a steering committee type thing. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be Hyperion at this point, would it not? Uh, well, I guess it comes down to um, you know, paying some money to port a new platform. Yes, but, but who do I talk to first? Who do I give the money to, I think is the question. It is a question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would it be, I would expect to with the degree, but would be the starting point. Well, yeah. Right, starting point. And then he would talk to <coughs> Trevor, except SD owner, and then a deal would be worked through, right? I, I That's the way I think I would do it. I would talk to Trevor first because Seven you eight. need... The OS is way bigger than Exec SG, so I would talk Timothy. to Timothy DeGroote first. I, I think that would be the person to contact first, yeah. so Hyperion. And then he would then say, hey, by the way, uh, this guy wants to port to this hardware platform. Plus, you're a busy man. Uh, so, <laughs> so, that would be my approach. Uh, there's another question. This is uh, someone named uh, Asymmetrics on Amiga World. Uh, he's, again, lots of questions, some of them are very technical, but uh, oh. one of them is how much of Amiga OS, and I guess in this case the exec SG process, uh, been updated to modern C? This steps from a conversation yesterday about C17, C20. How much of the, the code base in exec SG is actually new, modern based stuff versus a uh, legacy that hasn't been touched? Hmm. Well, <laughs> exec SG uh, is very low level, hardware banging, bit bashing thing. Uh, the only, well, I, I, I know C99, use that, but uh, the only thing I really use for C99 is the for loop stuff. <laughs> Scope of variables, right? Um, there is, we, we're not gonna use the array feature. Uh, we're not gonna use other modern C features that cause trouble with kernels like exec SG because everything's kind of fixed and we already have our own memory subsystem and everything so we wouldn't use the C features for that. We're not going to use the floating point of modern C because that we already have that. Uh, so I'm not sure what features I would use for modern modern C. <laughs> Getting rid of a C. There's C eighty nine, C ninety nine and what's the next one? I 
But Steve, everything's been re rewritten since 68K. It's all new code, right? Well, it's all new code, yeah. It's, it's, post, it's, it's all new code, yeah. And there's very little assembly language in there. We're trying to not use assembly, but many times you have to drop down to it. But the C we use is, is so simple, I don't see why I would worry about pushing modern C on it. Uh, that's more for applications. That's uh, applications need to use the more modern stuff. Kernel? Eh, yeah, you could argue. <laughs> I, I definitely would use stuff that uh, didn't exist to the, before. Uh, the constants are nice instead of macros. There's not much, not that I see. So uh, I, I don't know. <clears throat> we definitely compile with, I don't know if we use C99 on or off. Yeah, we do. We do. We, we, the, see, in GCC, you have to turn it on explicitly if you use older versions. And we, we turn it on explicitly in C99 at least. Sort of. Answers the question. <laughs> There's a lot of questions. Okay. 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 Shoot another one. Go, Bill, go. Uh, uh, this, this one is for Trevor. I'm reading the screen, Trevor. Uh-oh. I'm just going to read what was posted in the Mi board. <laughs> you can choose not to answer if you don't want to. Uh, since Trevor, I'm, I'm going to add a couple of words in here to make it sound better, now owns exec SG, wouldn't it be simpler, uh, uh, or isn't it simpler to buy other OS uh, components of the respective developer and become independent and having to deal with other parties um, uh, with regards to Amigo OS. Well, actually, it's already a good question. I mean, it's a good question. will take over But, um, uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, you sound yeah, great. Great. Um, good question, actually. <coughs> um, I, I've said it internally, I'll say externally now. You know, uh, XFSG is part of Amigo OS. Without Amigo OS, there's no XFSG. Without XFSG, there's no Amigo OS. And uh, I'm here because, look, I've got an Amiga shirt on. <laughs> I'm an Amiga. You know, and and uh, I've always talked about continuation and legacy and development and the future of Amiga OS. Uh, I might like other operating systems, but it's, for me, it's Amiga OS. So I don't see an issue, fellas. Um, if, if a horrible day came when there was no, uh, no company holding or developing the Chrome Amiga OS, then we'd have to take a decision to make sure we continue with the development. So, but at the moment, I don't see that as an issue. Is that a fair enough answer? Um, I'd a little add to that. Go on. Yeah. Um, so he, he asked, it, would it be easier? And I, from my point of view, uh, it's not any easier because everybody has to work in parallel. Mm -hmm. So whether you know, DOS library is owned by this entity or that entity. I don't really care as long as the developers are working in parallel, right? So it might be easier from the moving to platforms because we can all roll in the same direction much easier if we don't have to get this guy convinced and this guy convinced. But it doesn't really make development any easier because uh, we all have to go in parallel to, to get stuff done quickly. Right? If you think about uh, de developers, wherever they are, you know, whether they're Hyperion or, or, or uh, Morphos based or uh, Aeros or Aeon, uh, they all work separately anyway. They all live hundreds and thousands of miles apart. So uh, it, it's Amiga OS is developed like that. No one's sitting in the same room. Mm -hmm. In fact, the only time we do that is here. Yeah. 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 So I, I don't think it makes it easier. Yeah. Maybe simpler, but not easier, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> There's less people to uh, coordinate, but... Uh... Yeah, we're going we're gonna to switch to a uh, analog.
vote now and sign the components are separately delivered, separate companies? Yes. yes. You know, the, the graphic subsystem, the, the drivers, the, mm -hmm. you know, the warp 3D Nova stuff, that's from another company. Mm -hmm. uh, it's from Matthew Lehman and Aeon, Aeon Technology. Um, the all of the uh, the developers, I mean, they give their time and, uh, and energy, and they're all around the world. Yeah. yeah. So there's a, another question from Swedish Pete on the IRC. Um, would it be a uh, what would be an ideal demo application to showcase the planned features of Exec SG uh, on the tape war? What would that be like, in your opinion? Hmm. Like a, a demonstration. Yeah. 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 I, I, think yeah, when, I know uh, what you mean. Yeah. When Hans came up with the compositing engine, he created the room with the bouncing ball that you could move in 3D, even yeah. though it was entirely a 2D appli uh, application. I'm just curious, that kind of thing. Yeah. 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 I'm not. I'm not as clever as Hans. <laughs> but um, <laughs> uh, so it's multi-core. So you expect something to run in parallel. Yeah. Yeah. So I. I would like to have uh, the 68K run in UAE running on a separate core from the OS, that kind of trick, right? That would be awesome, right? That, that would be really good. You know? A and also, the very simplest thing is to see the calls up there and, and being active. Oh, yeah, yeah, you do a little task thing, yeah, yeah. like, you know, Windows, Mac, whatever, and you got a little, here's core one's doing this, core two's doing that, you know? That's cute, but... I think you guys would like to see it really going, right? <laughs> but we do have to uh, extend certain tools and things to, to be multi-core aware and display the information, for sure. So that's the first demo, but I'd like to see like UAE running on a separate core, something heavy, okay? Yeah, that's my personal. Uh, are you committing to updating UAE for OS4? Is that what I just heard? <laughs> oh. That, that was a sneaky question. That's dirty. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It'll be ready. No. <laughs> At launch day. <laughs> two weeks. Yeah, no no more than two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. I would like that, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. While, while Bill's checking the, the questions online, any more in the room? Is there anything in Exec SG that needs to be updated in order for a new future web browser to really help uh, those of us that want to use an X5000 as a daily driver need better web uh, access for some of us doing business? Anything yeah. in there that has to be updated Repeat to make that question. happen? So the question was, uh, is there anything that needs to be updated in Exec SG to allow Example of what web browser could be used so the X5000 or the H1 could be used. Yes, yes, there is. You're welcome. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> um, I, I took a quick look at this, and uh, it's it's a layering, right? So you start with Exec SG, but that that doesn't really matter. What matters is the C++ library that sits on top of that and the multi-threading and all the wonderful stuff that goes on in there. So that particular layer needs uh, a thing called Atomics, um, which is a critical sections from the old days. You turn off all interrupts and do something and turn it back on. Um, we need critical sections uh, or Atomics. We need um, very good threading support. Uh, there, there's going to be some memory ma management stuff that needs to change as well. I believe we're going to have to add memory mapping, but I'm not sure yet, but it depends what resources it uses. Uh, so yes, yes, there's a few things that we need to do to support up the chain, up the layers. Hey, hey to, to amend what he's saying is probably more of a comment, but there's probably a lot of opportunity to make it go faster. Optimization. To, to allow things like the networking to go faster. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, the video is pretty good, but we need those as well to be able to power those more hungry applications, right? Yes. That's and the DMA uh, engine, that kind of stuff. And the GART uh, it needs to be in the kernel. And that, that GART enables the video, which enables well, hold the, on one the 2D. Hold on. Right? There's a question with GART in it. Let me read that. Yeah. <laughs> Where did I go? Um, oh, man, I know it's in here. 
Someone on, on uh, a, uh, here it is. Uh, at MUS site, there also is GART implementation, faster speed, 64-bit support, and extending the RAM limit beyond two to four, uh, to two to four gigabytes and beyond. Um, uh, is these also planned features? Yes. So it's in that same. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so what, <laughs> is the, what, what is the what is the GART do? And do you want to talk about oh, how it speaks? It's to just a, a way of talking to the graphics card. So the way we talk to the graphics card now is through the slowest possible way you could. <laughs> it couldn't be slower. <laughs> so uh, that's why this, this thing called GART was invented to talk to graphics cards because the amount of data you're pushing back and forth is enormous to the CPU. It's like a, a bus, right? It's just a way of talking. Uh, so they invented this GART to speed that up. And uh, you can look on Wikipedia what that means if you wish, but uh, it basically it's a faster way to talk to the graphics card and a more efficient way, and it uses less uh, resources, less CPU to do it. A and and you know, Hans De Reuter, who does all the work for Aeon on graphics card development, uh, drivers, what 3D mode or 3D, uh, he is particularly interested <laughs> in getting GART operating up and running. Yes. It, it just really will speed up the whole process. I, I think it makes his life easier, too, I'm pretty sure. I don't know how, but probably does. I'm not a graphics driver expert. So uh, I'll ask a question. Um, we talked, and you've, you've talked about this at different times throughout the weekend, and most of it's filmed. Um, one of the things that, that I've seen as a Amiga user of the next generation platform is a slowdown in uh, updates and external information some of it's valid, some of it might be less valid. From an exec SG perspective, how do you plan to communicate even these low level changes and updates uh, that you know TJ brought up, I want a better web browser, but there's a series of things that have to get there. So how do you plan on communicating to us over the coming weeks, months, years um, uh, of what's going on inside Amiga, uh, the SG kernel and so forth? Yeah, well, well uh, my hope was that we would, we would uh, use the steering committee to release information together. That was my hope, uh, especially important stuff like that. For little things, like uh, we added this feature to ExecSG, we might just do our own little press release. <laughs> you know, just, it's coming soon. But uh, we do have to coordinate because uh, I, don't, I don't have uh, visibility into Hyperion's release schedule. And I want to. I want us to work lockstep, and I don't want us to finish a feature like DMA engine, and it sits for six months. Not ideal, right? So we're going to go as a per feature basis, basically at this point. So if uh, again with the steering committee, that's what it's designed for, is to negotiate this kind of thing. Like when, when should we release it? Does it help you now, or should we wait a little bit? You know, is it ready? Uh, do you need to use this, integrate this into the OS first and then do it, right? Or can I just release it tomorrow, right? Um, I also think there'll be opportunities where we can do pre-releases on exec SG stuff. There might be a little feature that, um, I don't know what it is yet, but we could just say, okay, you, you could try this. The API is finished. We know we're not going to change the API. <laughs> Hyperion is still working in parallel, but we want you have it now just to get some more exposure. We, we, that might happen. I don't know what, I'm not going to say it is happening yet, but uh, I envision that's a possibility, right? That, that, so that's my hope, is that, but I, I'm still hoping that we can go lockstep and we can do updates with Hyperion, but maybe once in a while we'll sneak out a little thing on the side, I don't you know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, speaking, speaking of uh, the DMA engine, for instance, yeah. um, would there be anything to, uh, to uh, block you from, uh, in coordination with releasing such a thing, uh, creating an example of its usage, an actual practical uh, program that, that uh, says, okay, we, we uh, released uh, the DMA engine it in its first version, and see how it can work for you. See, see how how f fast things go. I don't know what the, it would be. Maybe a, a little game or a s uh, mm -hmm. 
copying routine or whatever it is, but something that will say, okay, not only did we release it and sit back and wait for Hyperion to uh, use it in the OS, but we actually did a practical example of... Uh, I'm gonna jump in there. I mean, we, uh, we do that already, to be honest. Um, uh, I know Aon does that with the stuff it releases. There's always a little example, a little, little uh, especially on the graphics side. Um, but uh, I, sorry, but uh, don't, doesn't Hyperion also do that uh, with the yep, with yep. The SDK? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, in yeah. In actually, we have a test program already. We plan to release with it. Yeah. Um, maybe needs a little polish. I actually showed it during the DevCon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, probably need. Uh, you know, I'd like to talk to somebody like Andy Brode and <laughs> hey, put this in Sketchblock or something, right? <laughs> You know, to, to get a little preview so that yeah, you know, before it's released. Yeah, I was thinking more like uh, demonstrating it to the to the pub general yeah, public. Yeah, yeah, because if he puts it in there right now and 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 you could see it work, you know, it might inspire other developers. Yeah, yeah, which is what we're shooting for. We want to inspire developers, which will in turn make users a little bit happier, right? Because they they can use their hardware to the fullest. Yeah, but that, no, we we have an SDK to go with it. Uh, maybe a little bit more though, right? Maybe we should have an application is what you're saying, yeah. Good idea. Of yeah. course, if you are a developer and you wa want to get involved in the Exec SG team, contact this man because um, we want as yeah. many good developers as possible, don't we? Yes, we do. Mm. Yes, we do. Yeah. Maybe you're retired and thinking of developing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> only, he only said that because Tony Wyatt just walked in, who has retired and is developing like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other questions from the room? Let me just do one last check online. Uh, there's a final question from uh, Swedish Pete again. Thank you for uh, giving these on IRC. He says, mm -hmm. thank you again. One final question. Multi Threading is a potential foreign concept to Amiga OS developers, provided the rights are secured. Would it make any sense to update the ROM kernel manuals uh, to reduce the height of the learning curve up ahead? Yes. Yes, I, I know what he's talking about. That's about threading and how difficult it can be. It is very difficult. Extremely difficult, actually. Um, and <laughs> I, I brought this up earlier yesterday to some developers and they say, oh, I'm good at it. <laughs> One guy else saying the other guy, oh, yeah, I'm good at it, too. Actually, nobody's good at it. <laughs> we can mathematically prove this, actually. <laughs> that's, why, uh, that's why languages have, have are obscuring threading models now. You don't play with threads. No, no, you play with a concept that's slightly higher than a thread. And it's done by a thread underneath, right? Because we're just, humans are so bad at it. <laughs> that's, that's what the computing world has to have, have to do, right? Because we're just bad at it. <laughs> I mean, even if you think you're good, you finish it, the next guy comes along, modifies it, boom. <laughs> and the, these problems manifest as um, it runs for a while and it crashes. Real fun for users, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm hoping... Um, we can get C++ uh, 11 and higher on there, so at least you can do threading. And then C++ 17, I think, adds some futures and wonderful things that hide the threading. And uh, that really helps. That really helps. I mean, uh, we still will document the, the lower layer threading stuff, but I think for newer developers, you have to know they exist, but you should use a higher level concept. Uh, than a thread. Um, if you really want to make progress and not make faulty software. Yeah. Uh, LD thinks he's good at threading. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See? He thinks he's... They, that you ask him and they go, oh yeah, I'm the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, prove it. Surpri <laughs> surprisingly, LD agrees with you. Yeah, surprisingly. <laughs> so there, there's a question from YouTube and then th we'll make this our, our last question unless... Going once, going twice in the room? Okay. Uh, this will be the, the last, 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 last question. So, um, I'm sorry, I'm not very good at names. Uh, 
w one of the folks on the, the YouTube channel, uh, didn't, there's an I in the wrong place for an American here. Uh, um, the, the question is, Davida uh, um, Kalamanici. Thank you, the, the Dane had to help me with that. <laughs> Um, the question for Trevor and Steven is uh, Power uh, Power 9 and the Blackbird uh, motherboard, uh, is that considered for a future uh, hardware target platform? Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> uh, however, you need a few thousand, more than a few thousand dollars just to get the motherboard without the CPU. I have a Power 9 system from um, whatever the company's called, I can't remember it now. Raptor. Raptor, thank you, thank you. Um, mine's a beast. I got it as a server. Um, I'm having a few problems with it, but it's my problems, not probably Raptor's problems. Um, it was extremely expensive. <laughs> I could have probably bought five X5000s for that price. Um, but I wanted it for a server system for all the stuff I'm doing at the moment, with you know, obviously with uh, Aeon, uh, Amiga OS, Exec, but other things I'm involved with. Um, it, it's all about will that get more users for Amiga OS 4? Uh, you know, a system that's going to be four, five thousand dollars, will that get more users? Different I'd, like one. I'd like one. Different kind of user. But will <laughs> yeah, but it's all about <laughs> getting more users, more active mm -hmm. users, more, you know, mm -hmm. more people wanting systems. Maybe as a, a server service? However, if someone wants to pay us lots of money to port to to uh, a Raptor system, we do it, wouldn't we? Yes. Yeah. Oh, of course we. I'll would. take your money. <laughs> <laughs> so, sure. <laughs> okay, that's it. If you have any more questions, you'll have to find them and put them in a corner and beat them, beat them, <laughs> take their wallets, that sort of stuff. Thank you, gentlemen.